Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to crochet your very own cardigan just like this one that I am wearing. I'm going to stand up and give you a little twirl so you can see all of it. So cute. Now I just want to take a quick moment to thank Hobby. The yarn I'm using in today's video was very kindly gifted to me by Hobby. For those of you who aren't familiar with Hobby, they are a yarn company based in Denmark and they offer a huge variety of yarn, other crochet and knitting products, and also patterns. They have a loyalty program, which we love because that means free stuff. And they have a program called Hobby Plus, which for $8.99 a month gives you access to loads of patterns and heaps of other perks. So as you can see here, some of the benefits are three free plus patterns per month, double the points on each order, 10% off all regular priced items, a weekly scratch card, extra candy with your order, yum, and so much more if you scroll down you will be able to read the full list of perks when you do sign up to Hobby Plus. The yarn I'm using today is called Glitter Delight which looks like this. This is not the colorway that I am using in today's video but this colorway is called Sunset and it is absolutely stunning. The colorway I'm using in today's video is called Pastel Rainbow which obviously makes sense. Sorry guys, I completely forgot to add in the specs for this yarn. So here I am doing it as I'm editing this video. So it is 50% acrylic, 49% cotton and 1% polyester. It is super duper soft. I absolutely love the feel of it. It comes in 100 gram skeins. The recommended hook size is seven millimeters and it is a bulky weight number five yarn, which is also equivalent to about a 12 ply. Now I am not usually a fan of color changing yarns, but I do love that this has the constant white throughout it, which makes the color changes really nice and subtle because we all know how I feel about sudden color changes in color changing yarns. Anyway, as you were. Now this cardigan is so, so easy to make and can be customized to any size. Yes, you heard correctly, any size. You can make one of these cardigans for absolutely anybody as long as you have their body measurements. I'm gonna go as far to say as this is probably going to be the easiest cardigan you will ever make in your life. Big call, I know, but I am pretty confident. <laughs> this cardigan is crocheted from the bottom up, working in panels, so that's what makes it so easy to customize because you are working panel by panel, which means you can do it any width, any length, any yarn, any hook size, it is literally the easiest cardigan you will ever make. All you need to know to make this cardigan is the chain stitch, the half double crochet, the double crochet, and the half double crochet two together, and the slip stitch. Literally, that is it. You will also need a seven millimeter crochet hook, some 12 ply yarn, or a number five bulky weight yarn. But as I did say earlier, you can customize this to suit any yarn you like. So if you don't have a 12 ply or a bulky weight yarn, please feel free to use something else. This cardigan pattern is based off measurements and not off stitch count or gauge. Hallelujah. So that is why it is such an easy pattern to customize. And that's what I mean when I say you can literally make one for anybody. Now, last but not least, before we get started, I just want to let you all know that I am referring to US terms when I refer to stitches in this tutorial. But that is about all you need to know. So let's get started. Okay, so first step, you are going to need a tape measure. We are now going to take our bust measurement. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Basically, you're going to take your tape measure and wrap it around the widest part of your bust. Just like that. And I can see here that my bust measurement is about 90 centimeters. So once you have your bust measurement, you want to add on 10 to 15 centimeters because we want this cardigan to be slightly oversized and a little bit baggy. We don't want it to be super fitted and tight. 
For me, my bust measurement was 90 centimeters. I'm adding on 10 centimeters. So that will make it a total of 100 centimeters. That's how big I want my cardigan to be around my bust. If you want yours to be even more oversized, please feel free to add on extra centimeters. That's totally fine. But as a rough guideline, you wanna add on 10 to 15. Once you've done that, grab your yarn, grab your hook, and we are ready to get started. Okay, so once you've got your yarn sorted, we are going to find the end. And we are going to, of course, start our foundation chain. You could start with a foundation half double crochet if you like, but for today's demonstration purposes, I'm keeping it really simple and we're just gonna be doing a normal foundation chain using chain stitches. So now what we wanna do is half our bust measurement, including what we've added on because we're doing an oversized cardigan. So for example, my bust measurement was 90 centimeters. I've added on 10 centimeters to get 100 centimeters. So half of that is going to be 50. So I want my foundation chain to measure 50 centimeters, half of my total bust measurement. So I am just going to start chaining until I reach 50 centimeters. Okay, so I have just finished my foundation chain which measures 50 centimeters. Now what we're going to do is add one extra stitch and then we're yarning over and completing a half double crochet in the second stitch from our hook. So skipping that stitch that we just completed and going into that second stitch from our hook with a half double crochet. Now what we're going to do is go into every chain stitch with one half double crochet all the way until we get to the end of the row. Okay, here I am at the end of row one. I'm now going to chain one and turn my work. And I'm now gonna be working back along this way, completing one half double crochet in every stitch. Keeping in mind that that chain one we just completed, our turning chain does not count as a stitch. So make sure you are going into that very first half double crochet at the beginning of each row. Okay, so again, we are just completing one half double crochet into every single stitch all the way until we get to the end of the row. Here I am at the end of row two. I am again just chaining one and turning my work. What you wanna do now is repeat row two until you have reached your desired cardigan length. This piece that we're working on now is going to be the back of your cardigan. So once you're done with it, you should have a piece that measures from the hem all the way up until the nape of your neck. So wherever you want the cardigan to finish on your body is totally up to you. For me, I will have my hemline sitting at about my waist and the top of this piece will be sitting at about the nape of my neck. So that's the measurements that I'm going off. You could have it sitting at your hip, at your knee, at your ankles if you wanted to. As I said, this pattern is totally customizable. So I'm just gonna go ahead now and finish off this back panel until I have reached my desired length, and then I will meet you back here for the next step. Okay, so here we are. I have completed my back panel. So this will be the top of my cardigan and then this will be the bottom hem. Again, I want mine to be a cropped cardigan, which is why you might think it's so short, but that's the length that I'm going for. So once you've finished your back panel, you can just fasten off your work. And you now want to take some more yarn and we will now be working the front panels of our cardigan. So we will be working it in the exact same way that we worked the back panel, but the only difference is rather than making one big panel, we're gonna be making two smaller panels so we have an opening at the front of our cardigan. When working out how many chains to start with for your front panels, I recommend taking 10 stitches off of what you did for the back. So for me, I did 50 stitches for my back panel. So I'm now 
taking 10 off that, which makes it 40, and then halving that number because we want to have two panels at the front, but we don't want them to meet all the way in the middle because we are going to be adding some ribbing around the edging of our cardigan. So we need to allow room for that because if I was to do 25 stitches and 25 stitches and they met up right here in the middle, you would have that overlap of the ribbing because the ribbing is extra. So we need to allow space for that. So I have just finished chaining up 20 stitches. I'm now adding one extra, just like we did for the back panel. I'm then going to skip that stitch we just completed and complete a half double crochet in the second stitch from my hook. We are now going to be doing exactly what we did for our back panel and completing one half double crochet in every chain all the way across until we get to the end. And then we will be completing one half double crochet in every stitch until we have completed the exact same amount of rows that we did for our back panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. You will need to repeat that process twice because of course we do need two front panels. So I'm going to complete both of my front panels and then I will meet you back here for the next steps. Okay, so once you have finished your two front panels, you should have something that looks like this. Now, when fastening off your front panels, you wanna make sure you leave a long tail because we are going to be using the tails to seam across the top of our shoulder. If you didn't do this step and you've already fastened off and cut your yarn, that's not a big deal. You can just join in some more yarn. So don't stress too much. Sorry, I probably should have mentioned it earlier. But you can just put one of your front panels to the side for now. And you wanna take your back panel and find the edge that you fastened off on. So your cast on edge should be down the bottom here and your fasten off edge should be up the top. And the same with your front panel. What you now wanna do is find the right side and the wrong side of both panels. In saying this, both sides should be pretty much exactly the same, but this is just personal preference. If you do want one side to be on the outside of your cardigan and one side to be on the inside, if you happen to like the look of one side better than the other. Um, but again, they should be pretty much both identical, so it shouldn't matter too much. But for instance, I have joined in some extra yarn on this side, so I'm gonna say this is the wrong side of my back panel. So in that case, I want the wrong side facing out. So we're gonna flip it over so it's facing away from us. And then you're gonna do the exact same with your front panel. If you do have a side that you prefer, you wanna make sure that it is facing the inside of the cardigan. So you want the right sides together. So right sides touching each other. Okay, so this will be the wrong side and this will be the right side. Once you've done all that, you want to find that long end of yarn that I was talking about before. And you then wanna to go to your back panel and count the same amount of stitches across, starting from the edge and working in, as your front panel has. So for example, my front panel has a stitch count of 20 stitches, so I am therefore going to be counting 20 stitches in from the edge of my back panel, and that will just tell me where I need to begin joining my panels together to make sure everything lines up nicely. Now for this step, I like to use a crochet hook. You can definitely use a darning needle if you would prefer. When I am using a crochet hook to join panels together, I do like to go down a few sizes um, to what I have been using for my project just to make sure that my joins are nice and tight and they're not going to be loose. So I'm using a five millimeter crochet hook to join my panels together. You can use whatever size you like. So all I'm doing now is counting my stitches so these two panels will line up. Once you have found where you need to join into, you can go ahead and start joining. You can join however you like once again, but I like to do it with a slip stitch. So I just slip stitch in every stitch all the way across until I have reached the end and my panels are joined together. Okay, so here I am at my very last stitch. Just completing my last slip stitch. 
I probably could have left a bit of a longer tail, but that's okay. As you can see, I don't have much yarn left, but that's all right, it's not the end of the world. We're then just fastening off and making sure that is nice and secure. So this is what it should look like when you flip it over. This is what you will see on the outside of your cardigan. So as you can see, it is a nice, clean, neat join, which is what we want. And you're now just going to repeat that step on the other side using the other front panel. So do the exact same thing on this side and then I will tell you what's next. Okay, so once you're finished with your shoulder seams, this is what you should be left with. This is now the right side facing out. So this is what you will see on the outside of your cardigan. So this is what it should look like. Sorry, I can't fit the whole cardigan in the frame, but I'm sure you guys get the idea. Now what we're gonna be doing is seaming down the side of our cardigan. So you will be leaving a space here for your arm. This is where your sleeve will begin. And then we will be joining down the side to obviously close the sides of our cardigan up. Now how deep you leave your sleeve is completely up to you. I do like an oversized puffy sleeve, so I'm going to leave mine quite big I suppose because I don't want it to be a fitted sleeve. I'm just going to use a tape measure to measure mine. I think I usually leave my sleeves about 18 centimeters deep so let's see what that looks like. So starting at the top of the shoulder and measuring down 18 centimeters for me is about there where my thumb is. I'm now just going to count how many rows are within that 18 centimeters so I can make sure I'm joining everything up evenly on both sides and then I will know for the next side that everything's all even if you're going by row count. To make things easier I'm just going to use a stitch marker and mark the 18 centimeter mark so I know where I'm counting from. So we're going to start from this row here. So that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17 rows for me. So I then know on the back, I need to go and count 17 rows as well. So on the back, this is my 17th row here. So I'm now just taking that stitch marker and putting it through that row as well to keep everything held together. So now my two sides are joined together. Okay, once you've done that, you now want to turn your cardigan to the side and we are going to be joining the remaining stitches. So the ones that we're not using for our sleeve, we're joining the remaining stitches down to the bottom hem of our cardigan. So make sure your cardigan is turned wrong side out. And again, I will be using a smaller crochet hook for this step. And I'm just taking some yarn and we're just going to go ahead and join this section with slip stitches, exactly what we did for our shoulders. Okay, so you can see here that I have reached my stitch marker. So what we're gonna do now is fasten off. So cutting your yarn, fastening off as normal. And we can then sew in that end later on. You can remove your stitch marker now if you like. And this is what you should have so far. So obviously this is your sleeve. This is the side of your cardigan and this is the shoulder. So I'm gonna flip it right side out so we can see what it's looking like. So again, shoulder seam sleeve, side of your cardigan. So as you can see, the seams are barely noticeable, which we love. And so now you're just going to repeat that exact step on the other side of your cardigan. So going in and joining the other side, doing the exact same technique with figuring out your armhole depth and everything like that, making sure that it is the exact same 
size on both sides. And then once you've done that, I will meet you back here and we will begin on the sleeves. All right, so once you have joined in both your front panels and seamed everything together, this is what you should have. Now, remember before I mentioned that we were going to be doing some ribbing around the edging. So if you do have a big gap in between your panels like this, don't stress. The edging that we are going to add on at the end will close that gap. So never fear. It will also add a little bit of length onto the bottom of your cardigan as well. So now we are ready to start on the sleeves. Now for this step, you want your cardigan facing right side out. So okay, so once again, taking your yarn, starting with a slip knot, we are going to find the armpit of your sleeve and we're joining our yarn into the armpit. So right at the bottom of your armhole. Just like that. And then I'm just going to chain one. What we're now going to do is we're going to be working in the round, but turning at the end of each round. So we're now going to be working along here, around and then back to the beginning to create our sleeve. So working into the end of each row. Now the stitch count for this is not too important, so don't stress too much about what your final stitch count is. The most important thing here is to make sure that your stitches are spaced evenly and not too far apart, because if your stitches are spaced too far apart, your sleeve will be way too tight. You would rather have a few extra stitches rather than not enough stitches. I can't stress that enough, especially if you're like me and you like a nice oversized puffy sleeve. So what we're now going to do is work into the ends of our rows from our front and back panels with half double crochets. Again, making sure they are spaced nice and evenly and not too far apart. And we're just working those half double crochets all the way around until we get back to where we started from. Okay, so here I am back to where I started. I am going to go in with one more half double crochet into that same space that we originally joined our yarn into. This is just because we want to close up any gap so we don't end up with a hole in our armpit. So now what you want to do is slip stitch into that very first half double crochet that we created and join with a slip stitch. And we're now chaining one and turning our work. So we're now going to be working back along in the other direction. Now, the reason you want to make sure you turn your work at the end of each round is because if you don't, your stitch pattern will not look the same as what it does on your body. So if you are just going to continue working in a spiral, that is fine and it will work, but just keep in mind that it won't look the same as what your body does. Your stitches will look different. Okay, so that's why we turn our work at the end of each round. Now, the most important thing here is make sure you don't crochet into your slip stitch. It'll feel like you are skipping a stitch at the beginning of your round, but you're not. You're just skipping the slip stitch because if you start crocheting into your slip stitch, you're going to be increasing and that's not what we want because your sleeve will end up going bigger and bigger and bigger and that is not what we want. We want it to remain the same size all the way through to the wrist. So make sure you're not crocheting into your slip stitch and you're just going to continue working half double crochets in the round, again, turning at the end of each round until you have reached your desired sleeve length. Now, this is totally up to personal preference. Um, as to how many rows you complete. So just keep completing your half double crochet rounds until you have reached your desired sleeve length. Keeping in mind that we are going to be adding a little bit of ribbing to the wrist as well. So allow a little bit of extra space if you don't want it to end up being too long. Okay, so once you've done that, come back here and I will show you what is next. Okay, so here I am at the end of my sleeve. For those of you playing at home, I ended up doing a total of 34 rounds for my sleeve up until this point, but 
your round count will just come down to personal preference and could change depending on what yarn you're using. So just keep that in mind. Now, what you're gonna do is do not cut your yarn. You wanna leave that intact and we are going to chain one. We're then turning our work as we have been and we're now going to decrease all the way around. So we're decreasing in every stitch. So half double crochet decreases. So we are yarning over, inserting our hook into that first stitch, pulling through, yarning over, going into that next stitch, pulling through, yarning over, and pulling through all loops on our hook. Just like that. And we're just repeating that all the way around until we get back to the beginning. Here I am at the end of my decrease round. So I'm now just slip stitching into that very first decrease that we completed to join the round, just like that. And now we are going to chain three, one, two, three, and turn our work once again. So you will notice now that the stitch count has reduced by half, which means I started with a total of 40 stitches for my sleeve, but now with all the decreases, I now have a stitch count of 20, and that is going to cinch the sleeve in at our wrist, which is what we want. So now we're just gonna create some ribbing around the wrist. So we are chaining three, and that chain three will count as our very first double crochet. So keep that in mind. We will now be going into that next stitch with a double crochet and just completing one double crochet in every stitch all the way around until we get back to the beginning. Here I am at the end and we're now just going to slip stitch into the top of that chain three to join our round. Remembering that that chain three does count as a stitch. So slip stitching to join. We're now chaining three once again and turning our work. We're now going to be working in the front post, back post, double crochet. So again, that chain three does count as our first double crochet. So we won't be doing anything around this stitch here, but we now wanna work around this first double crochet here with a front post double crochet. So yarning over, going in behind that post, yarning over and completing our double crochet and that is your first front post double crochet. We're now going in behind the next stitch with a back post double crochet and completing our double crochet. And we're just gonna work in that sequence all the way around until we get back to the beginning. So front post double crochet, back post double crochet. All the way around. Okay, here I am at the end of that front post, back post, double crochet round. Now what we're going to do is slip stitch into the top of that chain three to join once again. We're then chaining three and turning our work. We're now going to be working the same, but in the opposite sequence. So we'll be doing back post, double crochet, front post, back post, front post, all the way around until we get back to the beginning. So back post, double crochet, front post, double crochet. Here I am at the end of my second back post, front post, double crochet round. And we are now just again, slip stitching into that chain three to join the round. Now, once you've finished that, that completes our wrist cuff. So you can now go ahead and cut your yarn and fasten off as normal. And you will now just go ahead and repeat that on the other sleeve. So once you've done that and you've completed both sleeves, come back here and we will start on the ribbing. All right, so you should now have two completed sleeves. So your cardigan should well and truly be starting to take shape. So now what we're gonna be doing is just finishing off the edging around 
this area of our cardigan and also around the bottom of our cardigan. Now, first up, we wanna start with this section. So what we're going to be doing is heading to the right side of our cardigan and we are going to be starting on this edge here and working up and around and all the way back down to this corner here. So turning your cardigan to the side, you wanna make sure it is right side facing out. We're then just sticking with our seven millimeter hook or whatever hook you have been using for the majority of your cardigan. We're then starting with a slip knot, popping that onto our hook and we are joining into the corner of our cardigan. So just in here somewhere. Once you have joined your yarn, you are going to chain three. So one, two, three. And again, just like with the wrist cuffs, this chain three will count as your first double crochet. So just keep that in mind. Now what we're gonna do is double crochet all the way along this edge and back down to the opposite edge, just like I mentioned before. So we're just gonna be doing one double crochet in the end of each round. So we will be working into the ends of the rounds until we get to the back panel, which is the area that will sit around behind our neck and then in that case, we will just be going into the individual stitches, so that's nice and easy. But up until that point, we are just working into the ends of the rounds. So again, stitch count is not that important. It's more the fact that you wanna make sure your stitches are spaced evenly, not too close together, not too far apart. You wanna have a nice even ribbing around the entirety of your cardigan. So we are just going to go ahead now and complete our double crochet row and then I will meet you back here once I have reached that opposite edge. Here I am now at the end of that double crochet row. I will just show you what it should be looking like. So as you can see, this is around the neck area and down the sides, this is the corner we started on. We worked all the way up around here, around the neck, and back down this side of our cardigan. So now what you wanna do is chain three, so one, two, three, and we are turning our work, and we will now be working back along this way. Just like we did for our wrist cuffs, we are going to be working in the front post, back post, double crochet stitch pattern. So I will just show you once again how to do that exactly. So yarning over, finding that next stitch, so not worrying about this first one here because that chain three that we just completed counts as our first stitch. So we're moving on to the next stitch and we're going in with a front post double crochet. We're now moving on to the next stitch and we will be completing a back post double crochet. So yarning over and completing a back post double crochet. And we're just repeating that all the way around until we get to the end of the row. All right, here I am at the end of that front post, back post, double crochet row. I am now chaining three and again, turning my work. Now we're just gonna continue working in rows until we have reached our desired edging width. So I am probably gonna do three or four rows in total, but if you wanted to do more than that or less than that, you obviously can, it is totally up to you. So again, we will just be working that same stitch pattern, but in reverse for this row. So it'll be a back post double crochet, followed by a front post double crochet. And as I said, you just continue that all the way around until you have completed as many rows as you like. So I will meet you back here once you have finished your inner edging. 
All right, once you have finished your inner edging like I have here, we are now going to begin on our bottom edging. And we are joining our yarn into the corner of our edging. So you can see here that this is the inner edging that I just completed. We are going to be joining our yarn into this corner here. So not the corner of our actual cardigan, but the corner of our edging. Okay, so joining in our yarn. And then we are going to chain three. And this process is going to be exactly the same as what we just did. So you're going to be working across the bottom of your cardigan. Um, the only difference for this is you will be working primarily into actual stitches. So this would have been your cast on edge when you did your front panels and back panels and you will be working into those chain stitches there. So first up we need to work into the bottom of this edging and again stitch count is not super important but we do need to make sure our stitches are nice and evenly spaced. And we are just completing one row of double crochet all the way along the bottom of our cardigan. Once you finish that, come back here. I'll show you what's next. I'm assuming you guys probably have the hang of it now, but I will just show you the next step after this as well, just to be safe. So if you do want a little bit of clarification, feel free to come back. Otherwise you can feel free to go on ahead and complete the ribbing exactly as you did here. And I will be completing the same amount of stitches as I did for my inner edging as I do for my bottom edging, but that again is totally up to you. So go ahead and finish your bottom edging or finish your first row of double crochet, then come back here and I will show you what's next. Okay, so here I am at the end of my double crochet row for my bottom edging. Now I'm chaining three and again, turning my work. And we're now working back in this direction in the front post, back post, double crochet stitch like we have been for all the rest of our edging. So yarning over, finding that next stitch, completing a front post, double crochet, yarning over, finding that next stitch and completing a back post, double crochet. Again, we are just repeating that all the way until the end of the row. And then you will just complete as many rows as you like until you get your desired edging length. I will be doing a total of three rows just like I did for my inner edging. But again, this is totally up to you depending on how thick you want your edging to be. That is actually the last step of this cardigan. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off my bottom edging. So I will see you back here once I am done. Well guys, that wraps up today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you absolutely love your cardigans. If you did make this cardigan, please don't forget to tag me on social media because I absolutely love seeing your makes. You can find all my social media handles at the very end of this video, so be sure to keep watching. If you haven't already, please be sure to join me in the Talk Yarny To Me Facebook group. You will be able to find a link in the description down below. And of course, as usual, please subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications notifications so you will be notified of all my future videos. But in the meantime, I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye!